Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and today we're going to be talking about Transformers number one from Daniel Warren Johnson. That's right, everybody. Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and today we're going to be talking about this Transformers number one by Daniel Warren Johnson. Now, you know that I've been super hype about this book ever since it first released. It was at near the top of my best of 2023 list. I It has made picks of the week multiple times. I keep telling everybody that this is what comics generating excitement looks like. This is a book that's been bringing people back into my shop that have been lapsed readers. This along with other things like the Ultimate books from Marvel right now, even the Conan the Barbarian books, but the Energon universe kind of started this surge of people getting interested into comics again. The word of mouth that spread. So what is it about this issue in particular? Because technically, the Energon universe starts with Void Rivals, the Robert Kirkman book, right? But it's really Transformers by Daniel Warren Johnson that set everything up. And it was the perfect storm. It's the perfect storm of a property that is familiar to people. A lot of people know Transformers, but that is never necessarily meant that that equals high sales on a Transformers book. This is by far the most we have ever sold of a Transformers book. I ordered so heavy on issue number one. We are now completely sold out. And that's why it's, it's, it's needed to have more printings because this stuff keeps selling out. And that's not just some BS like Diamond sold out or Lunar sold out or something like that. Legitimately, comic shops have been sold out of this book, even those that have ordered extra heavy. So this book is amazing and you have that perfect storm of a familiar property that doesn't necessarily always equate sales success, but Daniel Warren Johnson, that's the factor right there. Plus it's image, plus it's skybound, Robert Kirkman, so this is what happens when you take a fan favorite and a much loved franchise and you put creators on that book that actually care, not just about the property, but about making dope comics. And that's what Daniel Warren Johnson does. And it kicks us off with a very iconic cover, a heroic image of Optimus Prime, but it also shows the vulnerability of Optimus Prime. He's been knocked down, but the one thing about a hero is he keeps getting up to do what's right. And that's what Optimus Prime is doing in this cover, and that's what they're letting us know. This book to me, Transformers number one, structurally and impact-wise, reminds me a lot of Jim Lee's X-Men number one, right? Because that was a property that was familiar to people. It was also uh, a popular cartoon. There was a lot of hype building up and it was a new jumping on point and it was the same X-Men that most people remembered but done just a little bit differently and that's what this is. So let's crack it open and let's take a look. So this is, of course, written and illustrated by Daniel Warren Johnson, Mike Spicer on the coloring, Russ Wooten on the lettering, and the first page really sets everything up. Now that the entire first arc, the first six issues are complete, we see how important this first page is. And I don't want to spoil anything about the sixth issue or anything like that, but what I do want to point out is that first and foremost, this is a book about the effects of war on soldiers and society, right? So we kick it off with, these brief images that are giving us little bits of information that we need. War. War on Earth. War in space. Death on Earth. Death in space. And then we see this rocket, and then Dad wake up. And then we're introduced to Sparky. Sparky and Spike. Now, one thing that I really got to applaud Daniel Warren Johnson for is I have never, even though I am a huge Transformers fan, I have never cared about the human characters. I've never cared about Spike. I've never cared about Sparky. I've never cared about any of them. Whether it's in the TV show, whether it's in the the uh, the movies, or whether it's in the comics, I have never cared about these human characters. But from the first issue, I care so much about these characters. Now, it does start off maybe a little tropey. We've seen this kind of dynamic before. Alcoholic dad. There's a family tragedy in the past. In this case, it's the death of Spike's brother, who was an astronaut. That's what we're seeing right here, is the astronaut 
space shuttle exploding. And that's what we're seeing on that first page is the shuttle launching. So we're seeing Sparky's past. We're seeing Optimus's experience, their similarities in war, and then the tragedy that befalls Sparky and Spike. So we've seen this kind of dynamic before. And while they're talking, Spike's trying to find his dad. Um, this dude right here is trying to claim that he saw a fighter jet um, that was like shaped like a box come down, right? Now we know that that's going to be Jetfire who will appear in this issue and that whole thing was set up from Void Rivals number one. Maybe one day we'll crack that open. But Spike finds Sparky. He's at the bar. He's been at the bar all day long even though he's got to go to work. So we're seeing that he's not in a good place. He notices that Spike has got his telescope with him. He's like, what are you doing with your brother's tellers telescope? He's like, yeah, we're looking at the stars, you know, doing this kind of stuff. Remind me of him. He's like, why would you want to remember? It's best to forget all of that. And then they have a little bit of a tiff. And then this dude Davey shows up to bring Sparky to work. And that's when you're like, bro, you've been drinking all day and now you got to go work the night shift. Trust me, booze for breakfast. This dude's in a bad spot, right? So Spike is following him out. He's like, "Lo, yo, I'm just kind of concerned. He's like, eventually you're going to have to grow up, Spike. Spike's like, what? Be like you? Dude, that's a solid burn, right? But you can see that look on the face. Now, Daniel Warren Johnson, he's known for these big, explosive, dynamic, and kinetic books with lots of motion and energy and, and movement, right? But he's also able to give us the nuance of human emotion. He's able to explore the human experience in a very profound and provocative way that's also exciting and engaging to readers. All right, then we're introduced to Carly. She's a newer character, right? She is Spike's buddy, and she's got this awesome van that she's been airbrushing. She's got like a dragon and a barbarian and a castle and a wizard. And yo, know, I just, in my head, I like to think that Daniel Warren Johnson has this van and he himself has airbrushed all this cool gnarly fantasy stuff on it. Anyway, we can see that she just saw everything that happened and she's kind of feeling for Spike and they're going off to go to the top of this mountain to stargaze and to look at the full moon. They're having a conversation about the fact that Spike wants to be an astronaut just like his brother, but that's obviously not going to sit well with his dad. He's afraid to tell his dad that. And so they have a nice little touching moment. Then a big earthquake cracks the mountain. They fall down, somehow survive, and they're going to see something. But before we turn this page, I really want to highlight the coloring. I do think Mike Spicer is a great colorist. I think his work on this run is really good. There are moments where it does get maybe a little bit too orangey, but he never has a problem separating the backgrounds from the foregrounds. But I love this page. It's that thing that we were talking about a few videos ago, right? Uh, blue and purple and pink. I just love that whole kind of vibe and aesthetic. So they fall into this mountain and they discover the Ark. So this is the spaceship that brings the Transformers to Earth and they see it, they go into it, and then they find a room with all of these inert Transformer bodies. There's Optimus Prime, there's Starscream, there's Soundwave, Skywarp, Bumblebee, uh, I think that's Wheeljack back there, Ratchet right there, right? So we see all this. Now, one criticism slight that I do have is I don't think that these two big splashes work side by side. I feel like the page turn to this is dope. This probably should have been a double page spread so we could see more of the width of the arc. Now I do know that Daniel Warren Johnson initially did this with just three thrusters on the back, but he was then told by Hasbro, who didn't ask him to change too much, but they were very adamant that the arc has five thrusters. So he had to go in and change that. But then it kind of almost undercuts this, and this would have been a great page turn too. Maybe another page, maybe a double page spread, I think would have really fit that. And then you come to this. But, you know, regardless, it's still pretty solid. So all these Transformer bodies are laying around. And then they see Jetfire. Jetfire's there. Now, Jetfire showed up at the uh, in the middle of Void Rivals, woke up, was like, oh my goodness, I've been asleep for centuries. I gotta go. I gotta find my people. I gotta find the Cybertronians, who we know as the Transformers. So he's there using what little energon he has to 
reactivate the Transformers. To do that, he has to reactivate the computer, which is Teletran 1. And Teletran 1 is going to reawaken these Transformers, infuse them with energy, and give them new forms so that their alt modes are appropriate to the, the world of Earth, right? This is straight from the cartoon, from the first episode of More Than Meets the Eye. So that's what's going on here. But unfortunately, the first person who gets reawakened is Starscream. So that's a great shot right there. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. I love how Daniel Warren Johnson draws the Transformers. He draws them. So a lot of Transformers artists throughout the history of the Transformers, they draw them very blocky because they're blocky characters. But sometimes they feel stiff and they don't feel like they have a lot of fluidity of movement. You get the sense that they have that fluidity of movement with Daniel Warren Johnson's work, especially once you see them in motion. Um, they feel very organic. They got that organic quality. So Starscream opens up. And so I was on that conference call, the retailer conference call with Daniel Warren Johnson, Robert Kirkman. They revealed what happened on this next page to us. We were sworn to secrecy. And I'm proud of all the retailers for not spoiling it because what a crazy moment this is. But they wanted us to know that even though certain things would be familiar, this is not the Transformers that you've seen before. So we turn that page, and the first thing Starscream does is blow the face off of Bumblebee. Daniel Warren Johnson, Robert Kirkman said that they thought Bumblebee had been overdone, and they wanted to focus on other characters. They wanted to start small. They didn't want to start with all these things. Hasbro said, go for it. They kill Bumblebee in the first few pages. I mean, that's it. He's dead. He may come back years down the road, but right now, they, they swear they don't have a plan to do that. Jetfire's like, yo, what are you freaking doing? Luckily... Teletran 1 is about to wake up what we see here that looks like Optimus Prime. So Jetfire's trying to stop Starscream. He's like, what are you talking about, bro? We've been at war forever. Do you not even know what's going on? He's like, stop, this is madness. And Starscream says, exactly, and blows the gut right out of Jetfire. So already lots of death, lots of destruction, lots of crazy things. He points out this sig uh, the sigil of the Autobots, and he says, this symbol is a marking of true evil. We must be vigilant in wiping it out. And then this awesome spread right here. Look at the manga influence. Look at the mo Motion lines, look at the wrestling influence, look at the clothesline, look at the composition, angular, making us feel the impact. Even as a spread, this works so freaking well, right? Jagged, rough, dynamic, cutting, if you know what I'm saying. So, Optimus Prime, clothesline, Starscream, starts talking some smack, then he suplexes Starscream, and then he sees spike and carly he's like he has no idea what these things are and then all of a sudden smelting autobot starscream starts attacking but other people are starting to awaken including ratchet who drops in a giant kick straight to starscream here's something i'm talking about right here look at the fluid motion and the bending of the shape of starscream right there it absolutely gives an organic quality that inspires the sense of kinetic charged energy that's like making these pages feel, right? We as the reader can feel the impact of that. And then all the lettering. So Russ Wooten is the lettering and he does a great job because self-admittedly, Daniel Warren Johnson doesn't leave a lot of room for Russ to work with, but he works with it just fine. But all the sound effects, those are mostly done by Daniel Warren Johnson and they really freaking work. They're all different. They don't look straight from a computer. They are hand drawn, but they are colored. There is scratch. There's a scratchiness to them, a scratchy texture that I absolutely love in every single one of them. So then Ratchet saves the day, but there we go. Skywarp awakens. He starts firing. And then Soundwave is being brought closer to Teletron 1 because Starscream is realizing that Teletran 1's picking random Transformers to reawaken, so he wants to get all of the Decepticons first so that they have that advantage. And that's what's going on here. Optimus Prime locates the fact that he's got a trailer. He's like, in this form, I should have a trailer. Can we get my people in that trailer? Ratchet is assigned that task. He goes to try to get his gun on his way. And once again, just great, great perspective. And the motion lines, the speed lines, everything with the the the, the perspective that to bring our eyes into here and feel that intensity of the moment. And then right here. 
Daniel Warren Johnson is so good at the rhythm of storytelling. We got Soundwave Awakening and firing on Optimus Prime as we see Ratchet putting the bodies of their fallen soldiers into the trailer. Um, but I want you to see, look at the jilted movement of Soundwave. And then look here. He awakens, he targets, he fires, he hits. Then there's the reaction. This is a great page to explain this rhythm. In this rhythm, you see, uh, 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 right? You can feel like the jilted choo -choo 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 kind of thing, right? And then, bing, extermination protocol active. I wish I could do the sound wave voice. Then he targets, boom, boom, Optimus. And then Optimus is still alive, but his eyes widen and he sees Bumblebee. I was not expecting Transformers number one to have so much tragedy, to have so much emotion. Now, I've read Daniel Warren Johnson before. I'm familiar with Murder Falcon. We know do a power bomb. We know that this is what Daniel Warren Johnson does. I just wasn't expecting him to do it on Transformers. It blows my mind. So he's like Bumblebee. Oh no. Oh no. Spike is noticing. This dude is a good guy. He's feeling what's going on. He is feeling his loss. The reason why we were given the information so early about his brother is so that this moment works. Then Starscream shows up, once again, some of that nice splattery looking uh, lettering right there. Great use of that pink magenta behind there. And here's what I'm saying. Sometimes it is, it is a little bit orange, but it's meant to be because it gives us the intensity of the heat of that moment, of that shot. And these other panels, they're a little bit crisper, a little bit clearer, and I think it works so well because of that. <clears throat> so the coloring is great. Some more excellent lettering right there. Grapple. This one could track like the, the tape cassette coming out of Soundwave. And I love that it's still a cassette, right? So he's like, Soundwave, help me. Can't get to his gun, Optimus. And then out comes the tape. And I love that like 80s kind of style effect. Ravage comes out. Optimus is still trying to grab it. Spike runs to help. Carly helps him. What a great moment right here where we can see their small figures pushing this gun to Optimus. So he blows the shit out of Ravage right there. But now we're seeing the nuance of who these characters are on the other side. Soundwave is affected by the near slaughter of Ravage right there. And we're shown that these are not just robots without emotions. These are not just beings without feelings. They're not just cold. Not even the Decepticons are just cold. Well, maybe some of them are, right? Okay, he knocks Starscream off of him. Skywarp, like, smashes his leg down. Optimus rolls out of the way. But there we got Thundercracker and Reflector about to be joining the fray. Optimus cannot allow that. So he says, I'm sorry, Teletron. We are outnumbered and outgunned. I have no choice. What a great, great sense of the... The, the, the despair that Optimus is feeling in that motion, in that face, and the power of that blast, blowing up the computer, messing up Starscream's plans. Optimus, we're loaded up in, whoa, nice heroic shot of him cradling and, and holding our human characters and running out of this giant smoke bath, <clears throat> this giant fire. This giant explosion, I should say. A smoke bath, a fire. It's an explosion, Robbie. He's running out of it. <clears throat> the power is too low, but they got to transform and run away. So there we are in mid-transformation. I love how Daniel Warren Johnson, he doesn't just cheat and show us like the before and the after. He shows them all in mid-transformation, which is actually pretty freaking cool, in my opinion. Then we get this interesting... Side page. Probably would have been cool as a double page spread, but it also works cool just tilting it like that. You see that sense of movement, of speed, of energy, right? So there, now, we're in a chase scene, right? And they're about to drive off a cliff, and there they are driving off the cliff. And once again, the rhythm. Oh my good, that's a cliff. We're driving off a... Boom. Silent. Ah, bam. Perfect speed. Just a perfect rhythm to this storytelling, right? Um, so they're running, then all of a sudden Starscream, Skywarp, they show up, they're firing at them. They're trying to get away. Great chase scene. Jetfire wakes up, realizes what's going on, transforms and blasts off. And another thing about the rhythm and what he's doing, even though we got three little pieces right here, he's transforming, he's about to finish transforming into his jet, he's off. We ourselves fill in these gaps, and to us it goes kink, kink, kink. Boom! We feel that, and it flows on that page like that. Absolutely fantastic stuff. 
So Jetfire takes over, or he comes in and starts firing, hits Starscream, and then they fire at him. They hit him pretty bad. He starts going down. Skywarp is running out of energy, so Starscream realizes that they're going to have to let him go, and I love this. Grah! Sleep with one eye open, Optimus. I am coming for you. All right, so then we got Spike has taken them to this quarry that him and his brother used to go to to sneak out and just mess around with abandoned equipment. Optimus uh, untransforms, uh, detransforms, and sees uh, Jetfire, who's gravely injured. He attempts to try to uh, save him with his uh, with the Allspark. And this is something that, one thing about this whole first arc is maybe this Allspark does get utilized a lot, but it, it gets utilized in interesting ways, and you'll find out more as the series goes. But Ratchet, who is like the, the medic of the Autobots, he says the Matrix can heal, but it can't stop the inevitable. And there's this sad moment with Jetfire. Just listen to this. He's like, Prime, I swear I did not know. <sighs> Centuries of searching for healing for our home and nothing. Has anything changed? Is there any hope, Prime? And Prime's like, I do not know. I have failed in my mission. Cybertron will die. Everything will die. This dude dies defeated. Jetfire dies defeated. How sad. How tragic. How poignant, right? Then we cut to the Decepticons, because that's where we're going to leave Optimus, like, really had a rough day. Optimus Prime had a really rough day. The Decepticons had a little bit of a better day. Soundwave's talking about how they have to fix the computer to reawaken the other Decepticons, and including Ravage, because Ravage is messed up, and look how much... I mean, that's a dude who cares about his pet. And that's why I love Soundwave so much. But they're all looking at like, hey, we got to find these other power sources, and... Soundwave tells them, I have found places that have energy that we could convert to Energon and, and re, you know, rebuild this computer, reawaken our army. And he's like, why are you looking at me? He's like, it's up to you. You know, you have the most energy. You have the most supply. You've got to go do this. It's what Meg, do not say his name. I am the leader of the Decepticons now. Oh, have you realized there's no Megatron yet? The mystery of where is Megatron is something that does get revealed. And it's really setting up something special. All right, now we're cutting to wherever Sparky and his buddy Davey works. Turns out they work at a power station. So Davey's about to confront Sparky about how he's, he's basically screwing up his life, drinking too much. He needs to be there to support Spike. They have a little bit of an argument. But then all of a sudden, Starscream's outside just wrecking this power station. And this is what they're going to use to convert into Energon. They're trying to run away. Starscream notices them. And here's our grand finale here for the first issue. He sees Davey. Are you the creatures that live in this place? So fragile, so squishy, so pathetic. And he kills Davy, who we find out has ties to Carly. We'll find out more about that as this series goes. A nice little uh, back matter essay by Daniel Warren Johnson talking about his passion for this project and a story about how he lost the, the hands to his Optimus Prime figure when he was a kid. But that's it. Deadly ending, death, tragedy, all of that, all the way through. What a fantastic book. To me, this is just great comics. It's exciting. It's dynamic. It's filled with so much drama. It, it, does, it's not, it doesn't have any comedy yet. The comedy is coming. Um, but it's got the action. It's got that sense of adventure. It's got the sci-fi complexity. And it's taking something familiar and doing something different with it but at the same time familiar and exciting. I absolutely love this book. I know that a lot of people can't get into it because they're like, I'm not really into Transformers. And I know people that have read the book that aren't Transformers fans that do like it, or they're like a, a tiny little bit, like they're familiar with the Transformers and they get into it. Then other people just don't get into it. And that's fine. To me, this is a pitch perfect comic. This is how you do an issue number one. This is how you get people excited. And I have seen my initial sales continue to grow on this book. And the sub list keeps growing. The hype is real, y'all. And if you, wasn't, or if you weren't sold on it yet, I just went through the whole book to let you know why I think this book is so awesome. Amazing artwork that is generating so much intensity. And that intensity also comes across on an emotional level. And that's not something I expect out of a Transformers book, but now a high bar has been set, and I do. So anyway, that's Transformers. What are you thinking about the run? Let me know in the comments down below.
<coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but anyway, thank you so much for checking out the video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and join us over at patreon.com slash PCP if you want to help support this channel. Thanks for rocking with us. Station.